love solving problems. Uh, I think science and engineering is a fabulous career for people who see problems in the world that need solutions. My talent happens to be in coming up with technological solutions to those problems, <clears throat> but there are plenty of problems for which we will need solutions. So I think that's a, a, a lovely way to use your skills and creativity in, 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 in identifying problems and then finding clever new ways to solve them. The traits that are important to be successful in science include an ability to accept criticism. There's plenty of it to go around. <laughs> uh, and to benefit from criticism. If someone takes enough time to criticize your work in a constructive way, and you are able to listen to that, of course, you, know, you have to set aside the feelings of hurt feelings. Say, perhaps the, what I, I need to listen to what's going on. Why is this idea not coming across? What is the fault I have in the way I communicate the idea? Or maybe the idea really is lousy. <laughs> but we have to be able to uh, join the discussion. Mr. President-elect, Madam Vice President-elect, I am humbled and honored by this chance to serve the American people. At this moment of profound grief, but unprecedented opportunity. As an engineer by training, there's a certain temptation to see the work ahead of us as a series of difficult problems to be solved. But the truth is, that's not what drew me to this role. Like the rest of this extraordinary team, I'm here today because of love. A love of science, yes, but also a deeper love of our planet and of our people, without whom science has no purpose or meaning. I embarked on my own version of this love in the 1970s, beginning a career in solar energy at a time when our nation was in the grip of an energy crisis. In the years since, my belief has grown that a highest responsibility in each generation is to preserve our fragile planet, prepare our economy and our workforce for the future, and pass on a better world. Science-based decision-making has always been our most powerful tool for meeting that responsibility, perhaps never more than today. As a pandemic rages, taking so much and threatening all that we love, we look to science and technology for answers. Technology to stay connected to one another, science to find vaccines and light our path out of darkness. As climate change looms, we look to science and technology once more to save this precious jewel of our planet so that we might pass it on to future generations intact and in good health as it was passed to us. In a time of economic crisis, we look to science to develop the industries of the future, the ones that will breathe new life into our livelihoods and provide the good jobs that lift up families and our communities and bring dignity and security to all of our people. And in a moment of torrential divisions, science offers us a common shelter of fact and truth within which we can begin to come together and in time to heal. Science, once again, is not about cold solving of problems. It's a warm and beautiful exploration of the unknown, an expression of human curiosity that propels 
us forward and allows us to fulfill our most important responsibilities. The moment we fail to nurture it, we resign ourselves to living in the past and lose the chance to guide the future. The agenda put forward by the president-elect and the vice president-elect resonates with me, not only as a scientist, but as a grandmother. When we put science back to work for the benefit of all people, revitalizing our economy, fueling our climate response, broadening our perspective as we rebuild around greater equity and opportunity, we are making a society that is worth passing on to our children and our grandchildren. It is an act of love, and I am honored by the opportunity to help nurture this effort. Thank you.